Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam and this is a Weeping White Vanilla Twist Redbud. As you can see, all the branches on Vanilla Twist are weeping downward. And that's the main height control for this plant. It will add branches at the top that will go up some and then come down. So it will add height over time, but it would be very easy to control this plant in the eight to 10 foot range. It will get a little wider than that over time, but even these horizontal branches any that are gonna be in your face or too far away from the tree, they can be cut off pretty much any time you'd wanna do that. So I'm gonna to try to keep this one somewhere in the eight foot range and maybe five feet in width in the space that I have it going in. Like other red buds, Vanilla Twist is gonna be very cold hardy. This thing can grow all the way up to zone five, even some people say even zone four and then down to zone nine. So quite a wide range of areas you can grow this tree in. Red buds grow moderately fast once they've been in the ground for some period of time. We might get a foot of growth out of the end of each of these branches during each season. But on this variety, most of that is gonna end up going downward or outward and uh, not a lot of vertical growth. Since red buds grow in such a wide range, I think the sun or shade requirements could be varied by where you are. In zone five or six, you could almost put this in full sun, probably not have a problem with it. I'm in zone seven B, and here all the red buds grow on the side of the woods. And that oak right there is on the west side of where this tree is gonna be. It's gonna get tons and tons of sun from where I'm standing until about one or two o'clock, and then that tree is gonna put it in the shade after that. And that's kind of ideal in zone seven, eight, or nine. This tree would be very easy to control in height and width and would probably make a pretty interesting plant on the corner of a foundation. Definitely wouldn't put it along the foundation, but on a corner, it might make a really interesting addition to a foundation. Would also work well in a container, probably not in zone five or six, but seven, eight, or nine, almost certainly you could grow this in a container. It's in a 10 gallon container now. It could go in a 25 gallon container and stay there for years and they bloom well and grow well in containers. So the primary features of Vanilla Twist, as I've already covered, all the branches are weeping like this. Just like all other red buds, the flowers, which this one for some reason is trying to open up a few here in December. I don't know if you could see that. They're white on Vanilla Twist. The uh, native red buds are pink. There have been several white cultivars added over the years. Red buds are unique in that all the flowers are along the oldest stems. They don't flower really on last year's growth, which is out here in my hand right now. It doesn't have any flower buds on it. The flower buds are on growth that's two, three, four years old, and it's all the way down the stems. You can go all the way to the very, very bottom to where this tree is grafted right here, and there's a flower bud right there on the edge of it, and they're persistent all the way up the trunk. So when I say this tree gets covered in white flowers, it is not an exaggeration. It actually gets covered from the ground all the way to the top of the tree. As you can see, I dug a slightly wider hole. I didn't worry about the depth too much. I just dug it to the depth of the container. I broke the root ball up very, very vigorously. The flare on the bottom of this tree was slightly buried when it had been planted into this container or maybe into a previous container. So I did go in and pull the soil back from the edge of that. I mixed in some pine bark soil conditioner because I have some clay soil and I just want to make sure that it drains well. Pulled the soil up to the edge of it, made sure nothing on the top of this root ball was covered and then lightly mulched it and made sure I didn't get any of that mulch up on the edge of it. I'm just mulching with old pine straw and leaves temporarily until I mulch my entire yard. I'm obviously planting this tree while it's dormant. I'm going to water it in really well and then I'm going to back away from that. I want to check it in like a week. If it's dry again, I'll saturate the entire area around it and then I'll let it dry out. By spring, it should be pretty well anchored in. I'm in an area that gets pretty regular rainfall. If you are too, it's not gonna need a lot of ongoing watering. Uh, just check it if you become abnormally dry a few times in that first year. Once it's established, I don't think you'll have to do a lot of ongoing watering on these. I'm planting the tree in early December. Would not be a great time to fertilize it because if it warmed up, earlier than expected. It could get the tree started early. So I'm gonna wait until late winter, sometime around late February or early March in my area. You might wanna wait a little longer in zone five or six to fertilize, but I'm just gonna give it a small amount of slow release outdoor fertilizer. I'm not gonna to be too picky about the brand, but it should push some nice new 
growth on it during the season next year. In terms of pruning one of these weeping trees like a weeping cherry or this weeping red bud or a Japanese maple, I just take the pieces off that are annoying me or getting it out of balance in some way and you can kind of do it any time. If I get a branch that's just too far out from the tree or it's going too horizontal and not drooping as much as I want, I'll just take it off. I'm definitely going to be controlling the height on this tree so if a piece comes up a foot higher than I want it uh, before it starts weeping, I'll just take it off right at the top. This one's actually had a piece removed off the top recently. Uh, some of these branches in the lower part of the tree that I know in the future will come off. A lot of times when I plant the tree, I'll just go ahead and take those off. If I know they're going to come off in the future, I just take them off because it's energy going into those limbs that, you know, it's unnecessary. It could go into the rest of the plant. I'm not really that worried about insect pest on red buds. They do get a few chewing uh, caterpillars and that kind of thing that usually just something to ignore. Honestly, they don't do that much damage to them. They are susceptible to spider mites and a few other sap sucking insects. Usually that happens on stressed plants. They are susceptible to some root borne diseases. I'm definitely leaving this plant up a couple inches when it's planted in there. I'm never going to bury anything that's not buried when I plant it. Uh, that should resolve any of that kind of stuff. And I'm definitely not going to keep it too wet. I'm going to let it dry out between rains and between waterings. Deer like the newest foliage on these in the spring and they like the flowers. The flowers are actually edible by people. This is one of those uh, survival plants. If these happen to be blooming at the time that you're lost in the woods, these flowers are very edible. And so you know if we like to eat them, the deer definitely like to eat them. So thank you very much for watching this video. I'm very excited to have this tree in my yard. There are weeping pink red buds. There are upright pink red buds. There are red buds like forest pansy, which I did a video on uh, over the summer. It has the purple foliage and it has the pink flowers. But this white weeping variety is very unique and I'm excited to have it in my yard. So again, thanks for watching. And if this video was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Thank you.